Hi friends! Welcome to Kitchen Princess Bamboo Japanese Everyday Food. Today I'm going to be making Shokupan by hand kneading. The ingredients are so simple. Get your ingredients ready and we can make Shokupan together. I will walk you through how to knead wet dough from start to finish. It's a long video. It's not like my usual video, but I'm sure the video is helpful to make a perfect shock pan. Let's get started. In a large bowl of your bread flour, add in salt and sugar. Stir to combine. Add in active dry yeast. The yeast shouldn't be direct contact with salt and sugar because they might deactivate the yeast. Pour in now lukewarm water in 3 to 4 stages. I don't want you to add water all at once because it's going to take much more time to make everything nice and even. When it starts forming a dough, Add the rest of the water to the dry area. Continue mixing and all the ingredients form a dough. Cover and let it sit for 10 minutes. This step makes your hand kneading much easier because the flour absorbs moisture evenly and gluten relaxes while resting. After 10 minutes, take out onto your working surface. Set the butter on your side. Start kneading with spreading like this. You can see the uneven part with this motion. Pushing forward and pull it back. Place your foot back and forth and draw your belly button in and use your back muscle. Relax your shoulder and enjoy kneading. Everyone stays at home and enjoys baking for a quarantine situation and I have received so many questions about my shokupan video. In my previous shokupan video, I used stand mixer because the dough is very sticky. As I told you before, the Japanese bread is on the stickier side because we love the moist texture. Many of you try kneading by hand and told me the dough is too sticky to handle so they add more flour. But I don't want you to add more flour because you can't get the same texture as mine. This is the very basic of shokupan. If you want to change something, just give it a try. Generally speaking, the hydration rate of the of this type of bread ranges from 60 to 65 percent. But this is 72 percent hydration rate and it is not easy to handle. Your hands get very sticky but keep kneading until your dough develops gluten.
need 8 to 10 minutes that dough stretches like paper thin, almost see through. The other side, it's time to add butter. Spread the dough and put the warm temperature butter on it. By adding the butter, the dough falls apart, but it comes together soon. Start kneading again for 2-3 to three minutes until the dough comes back together. By kneading the dough, I feel I am releasing the stresses of stacking in my house. The dough becomes more elastic and shiny and smells so good. To check the dough is ready or not, let's take a stretch test. It looks good, shape into a ball by tucking the dough to make a nice round ball.
put it in a greased bowl, stretch side up. Let it rise for 45 to 50 minutes or until double in size. After 45 minutes, the dough should look like this. Punch the dough and shape into a bowl again and let it rise for 30 more minutes. What this does is provide fresh air into the dough and activate the yeast even more. And the uh, yeast releases more carbon dioxide which makes airy and fluffy bread. After 30 minutes, the dough double in bulk like this. Pork with your dusted finger and the hole you have just made is not shrinking back. It's okay to proceed. Take out onto your dusted working surface and cut into four. Today it weighs 280 grams each dough. Shape into a nice round bowl and let them rest for 10 minutes. This step is called bench rest and it relaxes the dough before the final shaping. While bench resting, grease the mold. After 10 minutes, the dough is relaxed and puffs up a little. Take one dough and press them seam side up. Roll it out to the half an inch thick and fold from top and bottom. Rotate and roll it up, tucking the dough and stretch the surface. Pinch to seal. Repeat the process to the other dough. Before putting in the mold, check the direction. In this order, the dough expands fully in the oven. Repeat the process. Cover with plastic wrap and let them rise for 30 minutes. 
For the covered shock pen, you should be very careful and keep your eyes on the door for the last 5 minutes of the final proofing. If you miss the timing, you can't cover the lid. But my son broke in for his lunch at the final moment and I missed the timing. Take a deep breath and push back the dough just a little bit and pop it in the oven. Wish me luck. Bake 40 minutes at 190 degrees Celsius. For the non-covered shock pan, proof 5 to 10 minutes more until the dough rises 1 cm over the edge. Pop into the oven. Bake 35 minutes. Cover with aluminum foil if your bread starts browning. Take out onto a wire rack. Tap the mold if it sticks to the side and you can easily take it out. For the shock pan, without the lid, apply butter for the appealing look. Let it cool to room temperature before cutting. Let's slice and see the inside. It's so soft, so I use a slated knife. Better slice next day. Look at that moist and fluffy inside. The simple is the best. Smells so wonderful and I'm so satisfied with this beautiful bread. My family don't eat shock pan so much so I can enjoy the bread for the next couple of weeks. I hope the video is helpful for you and I hope you learn how to knead sticky dough. I hope you can make your own nice shock pan. Stay safe and stay healthy and I will see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.